good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are. Um, we're very happy that you can attend this session. And today, myself and my co-presenter will talk a little bit about the Harper Project. <clears throat> so this is supposed to be an introductory session. Um, it's going to be fairly light. And we'll give a sort of a high-level overview of the Harper Group registry and you know, what it is, why you might need it, and the current status of the project, uh, couple, some of the things that we worked on for the last couple of releases. Um, and then there's also a deep dive session where our engineers will go into more details on some of the specific features that are coming out um, in 2.1 release, the upcoming release. <clears throat> and then we have a demo prepared for you today as well, and we'll leave the last time, 10 minutes for Q&A. So a quick introduction, I'm Alex Xu. I'm a product manager in a cloud native team at VMware leading the Harbor effort. So I'm trying to responsible for trying to understand the requirements around the registry, driving the roadmap, uh, collecting feedback, and making sure we're constantly improving and uh, seeing sustained growth within the community. And with me today is my co-presenter, Stephen Yun. Stephen. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you, and welcome come to join our Harbor Stock session. And I'm Mr. Steve So I'm working for Harbor as an engineer manager in Wimmer. Uh, so uh, I'm mainly responsible for developing the feature and uh, managing the release. Um, in the same time, in Wimmer, I also manage the uh, Tazu Kubernetes grid integration product. All right, thank you, Steven. Um, <clears throat> so, what is Harbor? Well, Harbor is a trusted cloud native registry that can store, sign, and scan content. And so it's the registry is basically just a, a place to hold, host and manage your artifacts. And so when we started this project, we set out to build an on-prem registry leveraging the Docker distribution, uh, which was the de facto standard for storing container images at the time. But we also wanted to address some of the issues that we came across while using Docker Hub and some of the other alternatives. And then over time, we've added more and more um, services and features to it, like lifecycle management features, uh, security features like scanning and signing. And so our mission right now is still to be the best cloud native registry for Kubernetes. Uh, and we started support for Docker images and then expanded to Helm charts in the 1.6 release. And now with OCI, which is the main theme for the 2.0 release that I'll talk about in a little bit, we can support any OCI compatible artifacts. So uh, this is a quick timeline of the project. The biggest announcement this time around is that we have officially reached graduated status in CNCF and becomes the 11th project in CNCF to do so, along with projects like Kubernetes, Container D, Helm, Envoy, Prometheus. <clears throat> and so you can see that we started this journey back in 2014. So we put a lot of work and attention into it. And so we're very happy and we're very proud of what we've accomplished. But we could not have done this without everyone in the community, including all of you guys on the call today. And the community plays a huge role in helping us understand, test, uh, giving feedback, and sort of driving the roadmap with us. Uh, so we're very appreciative of everyone's contribution here. Uh, and, the, and the project reaching graduated status means that you know, it's hit a certain level of maturity, but it's really the potential and the roadmap that drives this decision. Um, so this is a quick overview of the various pieces or capabilities that make up Harbor. And I'll just go over a couple of these real quick. The first thing is access control. You can use local DB, LDAP, or OIDC to connect to Harbor and manage your users and their permissions into Harbor projects. If you're not familiar with Harbor projects, think of it as like a namespace. It's a unit of tenancy and has its own set of repositories and images that are completely uh, isolated from each other. Uh, we also have robot accounts for service accounts, CI, CD type of scenarios to automate the pushing and pulling of images. And you can configure uh, replications referring to the ability to configure push-based or pull-based replication policies to and from other registries. So that could be a Harper. But it could also be something like Docker Hub or Quay or any of the other popular SaaS registries like GCR, ACR, ECR. Um, <clears throat> and then we have the ability to scan images from within Harper, uh, leveraging popular image scanners like Claire, Encore, 
Trivi by Aqua Security and a couple of others. And then once you have those vulnerabilities, uh, the list of vulnerabilities discovered from the image scans, you can actually create security policies around these. So you can create a policy that says, hey, this allow any kind of image pulling on uh, images with certain vulnerabilities. Um, you can also sign images leveraging Docker Content Trust, which comes with Harbor, and likewise create image pulling policies based on these on, on the signature. So for example, you can say something like, uh, prevent any unsigned image from being deployed. We also support managing Helm charts. So previously this was done in a third party extension that we had added to, that we had added called uh, Chart Museum. But with the 2.0, you can now push these directly to the registry and they sit alongside your container images. So we have a single web console that um, you can you know, do everything for managing your artifacts, your users, your policies, uh, running scheduled tasks like garbage collection. And everything you can do on UI, you can do through an API. And finally, we have a couple of deployments with Harbor. So there's a Docker Compose format. You can also deploy Harbor as a Kubernetes cluster using our Helm chart. And Bosch is another um, container orchestrator that, that's used very heavily in Cloud Foundry. So this is an overview of the Harbor, latest Harbor 2.0 architecture makeup. You can see that we're still based around the Docker distribution, still a crucial piece of the Harbor. Um, and going from top, you know, we have a bunch of clients you can interact with Harbor through Docker CLI, Kubelet, Helm, Client. And since 2.0 sees support for all these additional cloud native artifact types, you know, the, there are other clients that different artifact authors have built for interacting with the registry. So for example, Auras is one such client that's been, that's very popular for pushing a lot of generic OCI artifacts like OCI indexes. You can also push Helm charts and push open policy agents. Um, Chart Museum is still here. So you can post them in Chart Museum as well as in the top distribution. Uh, but we do have plans to deprecate our museum in the future. And then on the, on the right-hand side, we have a list of supported scanners. Uh, scanners are added in out-of-tree fashion uh, to harbor for pluggable interrogation services framework. And you know we talked a lot about this in the, the 1.10 release, but we do have some changes related to the default scanner that I'll talk about in a later slide. And finally, we've expanded a list of replication targets uh, so you can replicate not just to Harbor and Docker Hub, but a lot of the other SAS registries as well. And you can replicate you know, all these other artifacts now beyond just container images and Helm charts. But obviously, that also depends on the supportability of these artifacts on the target registry. So if you've seen the CNCF uh, announcement and the release block around Harbor 2.0, Harbor 2.0 was all about you know, Harbor becoming an OCI compliant registry. And so we should talk a little bit about what it means, what OCI is before we talk about what it means for Harbor to be an OCI compatible registry or OCI compliant, OCI capable. Um, so following this picture, we start with Docker on the left-hand side or the Docker distribution to be more specific. And the Docker distribution is just essentially some content store for storing your Docker images. And so Harbor as a registry uh, built around Docker distribution is just some HTTP API backed by that content store. <clears throat> and so up until very recently, before the 2.0, the only artifacts that you can push to Harbor and manage on Harbor were container images. Um, yes, you can push Helm charts, but like we stated earlier, those were managed through Chart Museum uh, separately from the images. And they didn't get the same set of features uh, like tag retention, tag immutability that container images have. And so OCI, the Open Container Initiative, is a group that came along to define specifications around format, runtime, and distribution uh, so that a broader set of cloud-native artifacts can get the same features as container images. And it wanted the, the distribution to be able to deliver a registry that is secure, cross-layered, uh, or layered and cross referenceable And so it took the Docker lead 2.2 image spec um, as a starting point to create its own specifications around image format and image runtime. And so what this picture is attempting to capture is a little bit of that process or that history where OCI uh, formalized these specs uh, around uh, image uh, format and image distribution 
and that work was merged back into a Docker distribution uh, so that it fully supports OCI images. And so Docker distribution in turn Harbor can now support hosting all these other cloud native artifacts that we've heard so much about in these conferences, uh, such as Helm charts, uh, CNAP, open policy agents, singularity. So the second icon here is supposed to be a, cloud, a CNAP, what's known as a cloud native application bundle. Uh, it's another application deployment uh, oriented artifact that's worked on by the guys over at Microsoft. So being able to host Docker manifest list is one of the things that came out of this uh, support for OCI. And the Docker manifest list is something that has existed for a while, but was, was previously un unsupported in Harbor. And a manifest list is essentially just a packaging of manifests. Um, as you can see in this picture, we start with the manifest list, which is itself a shot digest. And it's acting as a pointer to all these other images uh, that are each built for a specific architecture. And so it's holding these together in some way. And that's what allows you to use the same image name um, for all these different images built for different architectures. And so just try to keep this in the back of your head that there is this index structure called an OCI index. Uh, and we'll come back to this later in the demo. And so Docker Hub is actually a really good example of something that is OCI compliant. Uh, and probably the first uh, registry that's OCI compliant. And it can fully handle the Docker manifest list that we just talked about. In fact, pretty much all the official images that you see on Docker Hub today uh, are using the manifest list, you know, allowing for multiple platforms to be supported using the same image name, uh, image tag combination. Um, and so here, shown here is the busy box image with tag latest. And you can see that it's referenced in multiple shadow digests for different architectures. So you have Linux, you have ARM, you have MIPS, and you even have different variants of these architectures. And so when you do a Docker pull busy box from Docker Hub today, it will actually fetch the version of that image that matches your client. So unless you're pulling specifically by digest, if you pull by tag, uh, Docker Hub will responsibly fetch the right version of that image. And so that's the experience that we wanted to deliver with Harbor as well, that users can push and pull manifest lists. Um, they, they can manage these as a whole, but also manage the images within individually. And so that's also just one use of the OCI index, this multi-architecture uh, image on Docker Hub that we just looked at. But there are other artifacts that are leveraging this that are shown here. And so here we're looking at a project within Harbor. Uh, we're looking at a specific repository within that project. And you can see that we have a container image, a Helm chart, a cloud native application bundle, and another Docker image on the same project, uh, recognized by their logo on the left-hand side. And so we put this here to sort of draw contrast with the 1.x version of Harbor where you only had container images and nothing else. But now you have all these other artifacts that you can manage um, in the same project. So that's really the biggest piece for the 2.0 release. Now, the other work we did for 2.0 was replacing Claire Image Scanner with uh, Trivi, uh, which is another open source image scanner by a company called Aqua Security. And Claire has been our default scanner since probably going back the first version of Harbor. Uh, but we started looking at other scanners because users have been asking us, you know, I set up such and such scanner, or I paid for such and such scanner, and can I get that to work with Harbor? And so, you know, in the previous 1.10 version, we had done a lot of work to sort of open up those partnerships with different image scanners through our pluggable interrogation services framework. But this is sort of taking things one step further with regard to the embedded default image Harbor scanner. And so very, very simply, we landed on Trivi because it's simple, it's comprehensive, it's fast, and it's accurate. Uh, it's also easier to set up. There's no need to manage a DB instance separately. It runs in Dockerverse mode. Uh, Trivi also has a wider coverage for scanning different operating systems and application dependency managers, a lot of which are listed here, but there are more. And we found Trivi to just be superior in conducting deeper scans and capturing more vulnerabilities across all the different operating systems that we've tested, uh, including DB and Ubuntu, Suzy, Goton. So please check them out if you haven't. 
And I believe they have some sessions at this conference as well. So that's 2.0 in a nutshell. And I just want to spend a quick few minutes on you know, giving a preview of the 2.1 upcoming release. Um, and the first one I'll talk about is called Proxy Cache, which is the ability for Harbor to act as a pull through cache for another remote registry. And we can call that registry the target or the upstream or the remote. And so this is useful in situations where you have Docker nodes that either have limited connectivity or no connectivity to that target registry. Uh, and it could be any number of reasons, right? It could be security or compliance reasons, or it could just be uh, pure connectivity issues and limited egress options. And so Docker Hub is a really great example. Uh, and that was the case that was brought to us, uh, that was the most often raised to us. Uh, Docker Hub is a registry where your Docker clients from all the world are attempting to pull images from. If, you're, if you pull too fast or you pull too frequently, then your connection gets throttled or you might even get IP banned. And so Harbor as a proxy cache is meant to address this very problem. And in this case, it means that Harbor will serve. So if you have a Harbor deployed, it will serve as the middleman to pull the images from the remote registry uh, that you're trying to hit, cache it locally, and then serve it to you. And so it's much faster and it minimizes traversals over the network and right? prevents you from getting IP banned. And the way to do this is to create a project in Harbor. Uh, it's, it's, if you're familiar with how you create projects in Harbor, it's the same process, except there's an option to enable it as a proxy project, uh, which requires you to enter the target registry endpoint and the credentials. And so when you want to do a Docker pull from that remote registry, uh, you can instead do a Docker pull from the proxy project instead. Uh, so you will have to modify your Docker pull command and your pod manifest to hit that proxy cache instead. So I mean, in the interest of time, I'm going to just give a one or two sentence summary of this. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail. You, can, you guys can learn about this in the, in the deep dive. But essentially, we're improving the garbage collection so it's non-blocking, so you can still push and pull and delete images while it's running. Uh, this is not the case right now because the registry is put into read-only mode. Um, and then we also have an integration with P2P providers like Rupert Kraken and Alibaba Dragonfly. So there's going to be a way to sort of, uh, there's an action called preheating, which moves the images from Harbor uh, to the P2P side where it can be uh, geo-distributed to hundreds or thousands of nodes in a more you know, effective way efficient way utilizing their uh, P2P distribution mechanism. So last thing, um, you know, that's, that's the 2.1. It's coming out in the August. Uh, please give it a try and, and appreciate any feedback you have when it comes out. Uh, just a final word about the community. The community is doing really well. And we appreciate everyone's contribution, whether it's raising requirements or fixing bugs, uh, submitting PRs or doing code reviews, which is attending the community meetings and attending this KubeCon conference, for example. So we're at 12.4K stars and more than 200 contributors. And lots of companies are using Harbor or have partnerships with us. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm going to let Steven do the demo because I think we're at almost 20 minutes. Sorry about that, Steven. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Alex. Let's share my screen. I assume everyone can see my screen. So, yeah, Alex. Yeah, as Alex. Uh, introduced. So uh, we have several major features. Given the interest of the time, I'm going to demonstrate the two major features from 2.0 and 2.1. Uh, so the first one is uh, uh, about the uh, OCI support uh, we provided in 2.0. So as Alex introduced, so <clears throat> for the 2.0, we have introduced OCI artifact support. With the, this feature, we can not only uh, manage the images 
and we can also manage helm chart cnm bundle and other uh, formats which follow the oci distribution standard yeah first let's uh, have a demo situation uh, on the manifest list as we know manifest list uh, is a feature that uh, which can store all kinds of different uh, architecture images uh, for a single uh, um, repo. So um, I will demo how to uh, upload a manifest uh, in uh, through those steps. First, uh, we need to create a manifest. And Docker has provided a manifest command, which allow you to create a manifest. And um, you need to specify the uh, target URL as well as the um, images which belong to the manifest list. So here I have including two images. Um, so one is for the uh, AMD architecture um, images, uh, another is for the ARM uh, architecture uh, images. So once we have created manifest, we need to annotate uh, those two separate images as different uh, uh, architecture. So once this annotation is done and we can use Docker manifest push. to uh, push to the harbor. Yeah, so um, once we have pushed to the harbor and we can check our UI, uh, look at what the um, UI functionality we have uh, provided in Harbor. So as you can see, uh, there's a Hello World uh, manifest uploaded. And uh, for the manifest, uh, there is a photo icon. You can click in and see what the inside the manifest images are. So um, yeah, as you can see, uh, the two images, one is the uh, ARM architect and I is the MD64 uh, architect. <laughs> yeah, so next I'm going to demo is that, uh, um, so with OCI architect support, we can also upload the ham chart. As we know, in Harbor 2.x, we are supporting user to upload uh, ham chart and many have chart to the chart museum uh, so in ham 3 there's an experimental feature user can upload uh, uh, the ham charts to the OCI compatible registry and this is what i'm going to demo so uh yeah as the command shows that every time you need to uh um, set this experimental tag before you run any um, uh, commands for the experiment for this experimental feature. As uh, I have just showed, we have two home charts, and uh, I tagged before the demo, so uh, we can use home chart push to push this to harbor. And once once it is pushed, and we can check on the UI in Harbor portal and see the uh, Helm chart is uh, uploaded and we have a Helm icon also attached to with this artifact. So if user click into this Helm chart and we can see all the uh, additional information uh, introduction of this Helm chart, uh, this is the same style we have provided in the chart museum. Yeah, so in the same time, you can also pull from Harbor uh, about the ham chart that you have uploaded. And this is just the demo of this. Um, so 
Yeah, so in the same time, we are not removing the uh, uh, chart museum feature because there's also existing um, two users who cannot upload uh, charts to the OCI registry still consuming uh, chart museum. So we keep this feature uh, in 2.0 and 2.1, and we hope that eventually we can remove this dependency and we can store charts all using OCI registry. <laughs> The third I would like to demo is that uh, um, cloud native uh, application bundle scenario. So as we know, so in cloud native world, uh, it's not just the images, right? We have a chart, we have also, we have CNN bundle, we also have OPA uh, bundle, we have other like YAML file we need to upload. Actually uh, for, the o for the OCI support and we can manage all those uh, cloud native artifacts. Uh, this is demo that used the CNAP to OCI command to upload a CNAP bundle to Harbor. As we can see, um, uh, this is example CNAP bundle uh, JSON file. So uh, once we have uh, do an upload and uh, we can see from the UI there are two two artifacts within this same bundle will be uploaded. Uh, as we can see that uh, for this Synap icon, and we can click in uh, through this folder icon. We can see uh, there's one image uploaded, and uh, also there's a file uh, uploaded. <laughs> Yeah, let's quick, quickly go through uh, the power of the um, OCI uh, formats. Is that so? Besides any official formats, we can also upload a tar file or a folder uh, through the OAuth command line to uh, manage the diff other OCI artifacts. Here, I'm going to show you that I use the OAuth to uh, upload a tar file. So you can simply use the OS push, uh, giving a target um, URL and with the location of your uh, current uh, target file. And once you have uploaded, and you can also use OS. Um, Yeah, I also upload a folder. So once we have uploaded, we can check the UI portal and we have uploaded this artifact and we can also pull it uh, down to our machine. So I'm just uh, uh, changing to different directory and remove the previous download version and I will use pull command to pull the uh, touch easy file uh, artifact as we can see so when you pull the OCI artifact and it will all us will uh, automatically change the format that you have uploaded before so you will get a folder and you will get a touch easy file <laughs> okay as Alex mentioned so besides the uh, pull and push um, so there are uh, other features uh, like uh, scanning, replication, and uh, tank retention. All those uh, functionality can work uh, very well with the new um, OCI artifacts. <coughs> yeah, I'm just showing the scanning works. Um, so I think. Yeah, with that, let's move into the Prox cache um, feature. For the Prox cache, actually, we are solving two problems. One problem is that when you have a isolated environment, uh, probably you can use, you just need to configure the harbor as your proxy to pull image from outside your isolated environment. And then harbor caching this pull the uh, images for the first future use. 
So let me go directly to um, how the user can configure this. So first, um, user need to create a registry endpoint. Uh, this registry endpoint is uh, tell the tell harbor where you would like to uh, pull your um, images from. So for this demo, I'm currently choosing uh, Docker Hub uh, registry endpoint. As you can see in the previous list, we are almost swatting um, as many replication registry endpoint uh, currently support uh, as possible. So once you have configured this Docker uh, Hub registry endpoint, what you further need to do is that you need to create a policy cache project. Um, so you create a project and uh, what you need to do is that you check this policy cache feature and fill in the endpoint you have just configured and click OK. Yeah, once, once this is done and you can see a new project is created and you can change to the command line to uh, push images. So here, as you can see, I I have, um, yeah, I removed the previous download image and I will pull a new images um, through this uh, policy cache projects. So, Yeah, besides Redis, I can also pull the MySQL. Uh, I can also pull um, Hello World. Whatever you have in your um, Docker Hub, uh, you can pull it. Yeah, so once you have pulled it successfully, you can see a uh, um, new repository is cached in Harbor uh, in this uh, post cache project. Um, yeah, I think that's all my demo. Um, we give an intro to time and uh, for the other features we have introduced, please join our deep dive session. So we will have introduce more about other features.